Welcome to the Ninja Coaching Coast to Coast podcast, where our mission is to help you learn and grow by sharing the tips, ideas, tricks, and more that we learn from speaking with top producing real estate agents around the country every single day. I'm Matt Benelli here with Ninja Coaching founder and owner Garrett Fry. And although we focus a lot on real estate, this podcast is not just for real estate agents. It is for anyone who is looking to better their business and increase their income per hour in order to enjoy all of the things that life has to offer. So prepare to take in a lot of value that you can put into action in your business and your life. Enjoy the show. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Ninja Coaching Coast to Coast. Good morning, Garrett. How are you today? I'm amazing, Matt. Thank you so much. Garrett, have you ever had those moments where you just went, did I do that? Wait, I was just thinking about that, and then it happened. Or I was just thinking about that person, and then they called me. And it's, I've had that happen to me before. How about you? Oh man, you know, so it's funny. I used to joke with my my. You get in links with people, or like you get like in a flow with people. There was a while, a point in my life where my wife and I worked separately in different jobs. You know, today we work together in the same house, so it's a little bit different. But when we worked across town from each other, it was funny. We had numerous times that we would call each other, and literally, like I I remember calling her, and the phone was dialing on the other end. And I'd be like, hello. And she'd be like, how'd you pick up so fast? And I'd be like, no, I called you. She goes, it didn't <laughs> ring on my end. <laughs> but th that kind of stuff would happen all the time to us. You know, it's, it's interesting. And this is where I was thinking about as we were getting ready for our call today or for our podcast today is that, you know, sometimes we feel like, it, again, as you just said, did I do that? And the word I was using was manifestation is like, did we just manifest that? Like, did we create that? And I think it happens like on a very simple level of sometimes people we talk to. But in my years of doing this, I have watched some people create some crazy stuff where they have come back to me after literally putting something out there into the universe and coming back and going like, whoa, like, all right, that was spooky. And the reason I think it's important we talk about this today is that very few of us realize how powerful we are. Oh, yeah. I, we are incredible powerful beings. I mean, we all are. I mean, if you want to go down to the basics of it, uh, or the basis of it, I should say, we're all we know energy. you're strong. We know you're strong, Matt. You don't need to tell us you're all strong and you work out every day. We got it. <laughs> we're all energy. I am strong. Strong like bull. <laughs> uh, we're all energy, and that energy sends vibrations through the universe and we're connected in those ways. Yeah. And that energy is all resonating with energy. It's a lot of times what we talk about, about putting yourself in the high positive quadrant when you go and you're doing business with anybody, you're, inter you're interacting with anybody because that energy resonates with other people. Like energy likes to, likes to hang out with like energy. It's a crazy thing. And a lot of times when you get in, uh, oh gosh, we've never sworn on the podcast and I'm really, I'm really trying not to, but I'm going to have to use it here, Matt. And we can, people just <laughs> earmuffs, earmuffs <laughs> if you need to. <laughs> Tammy Spaulding said it the best one time. She said, sometimes people get into shit attracting mode mm -hmm. and it's, you know, they're in a weird energy place where they're just attracting in all the worst stuff possible. And a lot of times that's where we notice it the most. We notice it on the, on the lower energy side where we're like, oh, this like having a bad day. I'm really stuck in a rut. I'm, you know, very rarely do we realize when we're in the high positive attracting mode. And that's actually the manifestation stuff. And that's the good stuff that we want to focus on attracting in. But a lot of times we get, we not acknowledge it when it's in that like, oh my gosh, if another bad thing happens today, I just don't know what I'm going to do. That's a great point. <laughs> That's, I mean, a really good point because I think so many people have had those experiences where a bad day just turns into an even worse day. And it's turns like, into oh, a bad why week. me? Yeah. It turns into and a bad like, week and do a bad month. Yeah. You know, and then you stub your toe and you're like, oh, great. Yeah. J this is exactly what I needed today. And then you spill your coffee and then. I mean, and then a deal falls through and then you get fired and it's just like, oh, this is horrible. 
then you open your your car door up into that fire hydrant that's just a little bit out of sight. And it just takes out the bottom. Uh, that I did oh. that one the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know those days. <laughs> well, what's what's fascinating is we do highlight those days, and it's like, well, why? Like because. The energy does the energy works in either direction. It all depends on what intent you want to put behind it. And why do we not recognize the positive compounding effect of this? And is it that it takes longer? I mean, I read a, a quote somewhere that said, You what you put out into the universe, the universe will create and deliver to you. And then it'll put something in your way just to see if you're gonna mess it up. <laughs> oh, interesting. That's a great what what was that from? Um, well, there was actually a lot uh, more curse words involved in this, but there is an oh, Instagram it's... account called Afro Brutality, and um, it is. <laughs> what do you watch? It is brilliant. What are you doing when you're not on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? All right, well, yeah. we'll come back to that one. That'll be a f- next next podcast. We're going to examine that, but <laughs> I. <laughs> but I think it's one of those interesting things is that we hold on to the stuff that sometimes is upsetting. You know, if you look back at your life, you know, and you start realizing like maybe things that have happened to you recently, I think a lot of us kind of can get stuck in those modes of not the really positive stuff that happened, but kind of like the little bit of setbacks, a little stuff. And it's it's a mindset shift that we need to get ourselves into. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been in it, Matt. I'm assuming you've been in those modes where it's just like, oh God, not another thing where yeah. it works both ways. And that's the fun part. And I was lit onto this a handful of years back by a book, uh, E squared. And i Matt, I know we just talked about it, but I don't know the author's name off the top of my, and if I start Googling right now, you'll have a hard time getting me back on the podcast. Um, but E squared and Matt's probably going to name the author here in just Pam a second. Pam Grout. Thank you very much. Uh, is a wonderful book that will show you how your energy works. And there's actual tests in it. There's little experiments that you can do that will actually make you step back and be like, did, did I just make that happen? And we had it happen a couple of years when I was doing the, reading the book and I started to throw out these little experiments to my coaching clients. One of the coaching clients came back on and they they had made these little tools that actually measured your energy. And they're like, Garrett, this is the craziest thing. We gave the tools to people in our office. We started asking them questions and the tools started to adjust themselves based on the people's energy. And you could see them adjust whether I asked them questions about positive things in their life or negative things in their life. She goes, they had no idea what was going on. I was like, hold these. And all of a sudden they're going like, oh, this is a little scary. But so that's that's the energy that causes us to manifest the things in our life. Because then one of the next assignments or what's the word? I just used it. <laughs> one of the next experiments is basically saying, okay, what do you want to see in the next 48 hours that you typically would not see? Like, let's let's put something down and ask for it. And let's see what happens in the next 48 hours. Literally every person that I've had do the assignment, I did it myself. And I had one of those moments that I was like, are you kidding me? And it was right on the 48 hour mark. Um, I have a, and it might sound silly to you guys, but again, you know, I'm a car person. There's a specific vehicle that I love and there's a color that I like it in. And what I was specific about was the color. The color is Mexico blue. I love cars in Mexico blue. It just is something that I don't know. I I need to find a way to get a car in Mexico blue because it just makes my soul happy. Well, I put it out there because it's not a color you see very often. And again, this is about, again, this is going back some years. And uh, I said, you know, I want to, I'm going to have it slap me in the face, this color Mexico blue. Like I'm going to know it when this car shows up in the next 48 hours or this, not car, but color shows up in the next 48 hours. It was funny as I got online and I was searching, doing some stuff. And all of a sudden I got onto an Audi page. It was Audi's for sale. And I started scrolling down and the first car was this Mexico blue color. This is exactly 48 hours to the mark of when I said, I want to see this color. I started scrolling down and every single car on the page was this Mexico blue. I'm like, okay, that's a little weird. 
I was like, well, maybe it's like, like a fluke or something like that. I have a search in, like, did I do something not thinking about it? And then I hit the next page and it was another page of all these blue. I'm like, why? Like, and that was one of my moments. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, okay, let's look at the time. I'm like, it was exactly fine. And I, I kind of forgot that I did it, but all of a sudden I was like, and here's my results. Now, before I let you talk, Matt, I had another gentleman that, that did that, asked for a specific thing. And then he got on the phone with me and he says, you know, this is dumb. He goes, that works so well. He goes, why don't I just ask for what I want? I said, what do you want? He goes, I, I want a $1.5 million listing to fall out of the sky in the next 48 hours into my lap that I wasn't expecting. I said, great. And it was about, and he was, it was just a little bit over the 48 hours. He goes, I'm counting it. I'm counting it. I said, what happened? He said, I just had somebody reach out to me through a sign call that wants to list their house at 1.5. <laughs> there it I'm is. Like, take it and run with it, man. Like uh, we're not going to sit here and like, you know, split minutes, but that I have watched people create some crazy things. And, and again, I think we don't use it for good enough and everybody's got it in their, in their power. And I, I think what the, the challenge with this is, you have to let go, I think, to make this happen. We had a whole podcast on letting go because if you say, well, I want Mexico Blue to hit me in the face, and then you immediately say, no way this is going to work, then it's not oh, because yeah. now you've just changed the instructions of what you want delivered to you. You've went from, I want Mexico Blue to no way it's going to ever happen. And I, I have an f- interesting story too. So I don't know if I've talked about cars on the podcast, but I, I'm a big fan of vehicles as well. And I particularly like trucks. I like things that go fast. And so I do have a Ford Raptor on my vision board, partly because I want that truck, partly because I want to convert it to nat- to run on natural gas. The day I put that on my vision board last year, the next day, my neighbor showed up with a brand new Ford Raptor in his driveway. And I was like... <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> You're like, I, you missed me. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Wait, no, just a few houses down, please. <laughs> um, but it's weird how these things happen. And I think you have, I think the reason why a lot of people latch on to the negative energy is because I think it's easier for us to believe that bad things will happen for some reason. And partly probably because of the way media is and all these things, it's like we just believe that you know bad things can happen. And so we continually bring those into our world and we're not confident in the good things. And I mean, for, for those of you who are spiritual, this is faith. This is yeah. believing in the unknown, believing in the higher powers that good things do happen and things that we cannot explain. And I think one way to reverse the negative thinking to start building the positive is to just accept all the things that happen. Like I think about the bad day, you know, and I've had bad days that, you know, and then I'm on the side of the road changing a flat tire and a suit on my way to a listing appointment. And I'm like, man, you know what? That day that that happened to me, and it was like in the middle of winter, so it was dirty and gross and all this other stuff, you know, salt on the wheels. This is when I lived up north. And I changed that tire so damn fast. I was like, look at me. And I turned it into a positive. I was like, I'm impressed. Look at how fast I changed that tire. And then I went and had oh, an amazing listing appointment. I did it. I yeah. finally grown to be a boy. <laughs> oh no, boy to a man. <laughs> I'd grown to be a boy. <laughs> oh, boy. But, I think about right. But the fun, the funny thing was, is it turned into a great day, which could have, I could have been, this could have been horrible. Like, oh, this is going to be awful. I'm out here in my tie and suit sweating and in the sun and, but it's 25 degrees. How is this possible into, yeah, we got the listing. But it's funny, Matt, it's your, the way you said it is a hundred percent right. Because a lot of times people will have something like that happen and they go, oh, so it's going to be one of those days. Mm-hmm. And it's like, they've instantly set themselves up now for a pattern that they're looking for. A lot of times, again, you're not looking for like, all of a sudden you received an, un, an unexpected check in the mail and you're like, well, it's going to be one of those days. Ha, all right. Like, let's have it. Good stuff's happening today. We don't typically do that. We go like, oh, lucky me, I got a check. And we just kind of like take it and we move on with that one moment in time. But when it comes to the other side, we start looking at like, oh, like, all right, Mr. Woke got up on the wrong side of the bed. Like, this is his, you know, I'm in this pattern today. And it's interesting is like, for me, 
and I, ra- I, 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 I don't want to say I'm special. I am, but <laughs> I think for the most, I think for you the are most special, part of it, Garrett. we're all special. When those, when those feelings happen to me, I have more of a mindset of like, well, I got that out of my system. Yeah. Like whatever that was is gone. Like I needed to release something if I needed that bad day. Like literally when I put my car door and I'm really protective over my, I have an, I have an older car I drive. You know, that thing has been around, it's got 160,000 miles on it. I try to maintain it and let this thing like live as long as it's going to live. And believe me, when I open the door up into a fire hydrant, it literally makes my soul cry a little bit because <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> Oh gosh, I've kept you safe for so long. And now that happens to you. I'm so sorry. But it is one of those, like, le- like I got that out of my system is how I look at it. Not like, oh, okay, gate, it's going to be one of those days or here's like a trend that I want to start. But key, I want to go back to this whole idea of like manifesting, manifesting the happiness that we want, manifesting the, the success that we want, uh, manifesting, you know, what we want to be seeing the best in our relationships and the people that we surround ourselves with. Like, this is all in your toolbox. Everybody has this in their toolbox. It's really unlimited for what you want to focus on and what you want to have. But Matt, it's very important. You're right. That we don't have that little voice come in that says, I want to see Mexico blue. And the other voice says, yeah, but that's impossible. You haven't seen that color on a car or seen that color around you in months. The likelihood of this happening in 48 hours is really low. That little voice will move you just as fast in the negative way as it will the positive way. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think that's those are the challenges, right? I mean, to that that quote that I mentioned from Afro Brutality. Um these little moments, because I think the people will say, well, but sometimes bad things happen, even when I'm thinking positive, even when I'm trying to manifest in the right direction and I'm tuned into that energy, then something happens. And I take those moments and say, well, one, do a little double check on your energy. And two, maybe that's a challenge being put in front of you to see if you really want that thing bad enough, if you really want what you asked for bad enough to not let this interrupt your energy and your thinking and your faith and that it'll happen because it's not always a immediate thing that's going to happen. And I think a lot of times too, we need, also need to understand, we need to be very clear about what we're asking for as well. Sometimes we'll, we'll be a little bit confusing to ourselves or, or to the higher powers and like the neighbor ends up with the truck instead of it being in your driveway. Well, I'll put this out there. So I have an agent that I've coached in Hawaii for uh, uh, Joyota, by the way. If anybody needs an amazing real estate agent in Honolulu, Joyota is one of the best. Joy wrote me an affirmation uh, about a year and a half ago. And she said, I love working on challenging transactions. And I'm like, you don't want to manifest that. I'm like, that's not what you want to be saying. And she's like, no, no, no. It like makes my heart feel better when I can help people through a very difficult transaction. And I said, I understand what you're asking for. I said, but be very careful what you're asking for. <laughs> like, I, I, I see it. And I've had people argue with this me. Like, they're like, no, at a core, I understand what I'm asking for. I'm like, I'm I, great. But when you're manifesting stuff, you're creating stuff. It's very literal. Like it's very much like you're going to get exactly what you're asking for, not what you're, you know, think it's going to look like, like the Raptor may be showing up next door. So I thought it was interesting as it was about six months later, she's on the phone, just weeping almost about these transactions that are just, you know, she's frustrated and she's tired and they're not getting to the closing table and they're not listening to her and they're not, you know, everything is just blowing up all around her. And I said, are you still saying it was less than six months? It was like, it was way less than six months. I was like, are you still saying that affirmation? She goes, yeah. I'm like, please stop saying it. Like, please stop saying it. Like you literally don't realize what you're creating in your world, but that that's the power that we have. That's what we can create. And again, use your power for good. Now she changed that. And it was funny as immediately as she changed it, she started seeing different stuff. She started focusing on different people. She started putting her energy into different areas that would cause that to happen. Because it's not hocus pocus. I think a lot of people look at affirmations like it's a hocus pocus. We're just saying it, we're putting out there and we're being just given these things. And the reality is, is that whatever you think think about and focus on, 
you make minute adjustments and minute changes in your world and in your days that cause those things to happen subconsciously, non-consciously. And that's where you get the results that you get. It's not that like it just was bestowed upon you, but all of a sudden you put yourselves in situations to cause those things to happen, to make the big pictures match and make everything work. I think that's the biggest lesson is that it's, you know, you have the vision, you ask for the big thing, and then it's the micro adjustments that happen every day to keep you moving towards that, to keep the energy, um, putting that vibe out there because, I agree. I think, I mean, I think affirmations are incredibly powerful, but I think affirmations alone aren't the answer because you can ask for everything that you want. But then if you go the rest of your day not living that affirmation intentionally, then you're not going to get it. You know, it's not going to show itself to you. And then you're going to be like, oh, this affirmation stuff doesn't work. And it, it's not just the act of writing it, that's the beginning. That's the beginning to tell the mindset, hey, this is how we're going to approach our days. This is, this is the identity that I'm building here. Help me identify little things that will reinforce that so that we can get to that. You know, your brain is just a big Google search engine. That's all it is. So whatever you want to program into it to go looking for and searching for, it will do it. Like, if, I mean, literally right now, if you guys want to program in, like, I, I hate to do this to you guys, but like, Everywhere I turn, I keep getting confronted by cows, either cow art, cow, you know, real cows, like whatever that might be. <laughs> Guess what? Um, I can program that into your world and you guys can run out there going like, oh my gosh, there's cows everywhere. Everybody's going to be, be seeing colors, cows. Might... You're welcome. <laughs> I know. They're like, Karen, why? Why would you do this to me? Uh, but that can happen. And I know that I've even seen people go as far as write down people's names that they want to have call them in the next you know, week. And they'll check off the list by the end of the week. Or I've even had somebody write down a name. He said, I intend this person to call me by the end of the week. And I said, he called me later in the week. He goes, that was the scariest thing I've ever had happen. I said, who was the person you wrote down? He goes, it was somebody that I have not seen since kindergarten. I was like, <laughs> okay. Wow. Like, I'm like, did they call you? He goes, no, they friended me on Facebook. He's like, but really? Within like a couple of days after me writing their name down and focusing on them, they show up in my world. He's like, yeah, I, I'm a believer. Tell me what I got to do next. So incredible. So practice it. I mean, practice it. Have faith, practice those activities, and you can manifest great things in your world. Well, Garrett, speaking of um, positive things, we're continuing on with our shout outs to people who have left reviews for the, uh, the podcast, which, by the way, we so appreciate. These things are um, incredible. And I'm just so grateful for everybody listening and, and sharing and, and all those things. And um, hopefully this positive energy will continue to resonate with all of you <laughs> and all of our listeners. But Garrett, we have, a new, uh, we have another review to shout out here. We do have another review. And uh, Matt, if you can do me a favor while I'm reading this review, um, the exact town that uh, Brendan Nelson is in is, I did not write it down here and it slipped my mind. I know that he's north of Seattle, but I want to give the exact town that he's in because uh, Brendan Nelson is an incredible, I've actually had a chance to work with Brandon in the past. And he really did a uh, an incredible um, thing here, not just about our podcast, but about Ninja in general and what it's done for him. So he titled this, Ninja Built My $70 Million Business. Uh, Garrett and Matt are the most uh, relatable, knowledgeable, authentic, and enjoyable to listen to hosts in the real estate genre of podcasting. I first took a class from Garrett's dad, Walt, in 2007, and I've literally built my entire business and to date, my independent firm, Brandon Nelson Partner Realtors, on the concepts Walt taught me. The real estate industry has become overrun with absolute noise in the form of ice cold internet leads, automated communication systems, and rah rah. Focus on mega producers who of us have nothing in common with, and in the decline of transaction and relationship quality. And all that at a time when the race to the bottom pricing models are gaining popularity. But Ninja is the antidote. And this podcast is the teach is teaching it. Listen to everything Garrett and Matt are preaching. Take Ninja installation as soon as you possibly can and commit to the teachings. Hire a Ninja coach and commit to the Ninja 9 and you will elevate your life and your business and the public's perception of the name in the process. 
Brendan is an, he is an incredible, incredible person on so many levels. And uh, Matt, the city that he's in, and again, because I don't want to leave that off here. Yeah, Bellingham, Washington. And thank you very much. Brendan, I, I appreciate that. I mean, he wrote a lot of things in there that he certainly didn't have to write. I think it's just, I think more so than anything, it shows what committing to the ninja systems, because that's really what built his $70 million business was Brandon's commitment to doing those things. And I think that's incredible. And he's a ninja at a core. Like if you want to look at somebody and go like, well, what, what caused him to be as successful as he is? He is one of the most giving, um, rewarding person to the people around him of anybody I've ever seen. And you wonder why he's successful. Exactly. Just how it works. That's what ninja is all about. So thank you, Brendan, so much for that. I hope everybody's having an amazing day and I look forward to hearing more success stories. Thanks, everybody. Have an incredible day and manifest some great stuff. Thank you for joining us here on the Ninja Coaching Coast to Coast podcast. We appreciate your time and attention. If you receive some value out of this episode, we would love for you to share it, subscribe to the podcast, and if you feel so compelled, to leave us a review. Have an amazing day. We'll see you soon.